Hello, my name is Alana Hennerlau and I am an accounting and history student. Today I'll be telling you a little bit about Fractal Analytics. This company, which is based in Mumbai, New York, was founded in 2000 by five uh, graduates. In their early years, they focused on using statistical models to assist businesses. In, in 2015, they pivoted to using artificial intelligence models instead. These models process data sets far more quickly than their early 2000s statistical models, which were, again, the um, best options that we had then. In order to make this change, Fractal Analytics invested heavily in its engineering department, hired people experienced in AI, and expanded its existing staff's knowledge of AI. Shifting this focus enabled the company to expand further, and in early 2022, they were valued at over $1 billion, and they serve approximately one in five Fortune 500 companies. They provide consulting services where they innovate ways for their clients to perform better using AI to power crucial business decisions. And they have friendly um, user interfaces that help uh, all professionals visualize their data more easily to help in the decision-making process. Fractal Analytics has a variety of AI power technologies. In 2016, after the company pivoted from using statistical models to using the more advanced and quicker AI models, they also restructured the company. Now, each segment focuses on one of Fractal Analytics' five products. The services and tools that they provide help with financial analytics, cultivating a better customer experience and retaining customers, and optimizing supply chains and inventory management. We'll talk more about their five products a little later on, but first we're going to look at a couple of case studies. First um, is one company that sells consumer packaged goods. This is kind of anything that the customers use and use up and need to replace frequently. So think food, soap, candy, their client had an inefficient way of managing what to order from their stores. Each region had one list that everyone from that region used to order inventory, regardless of the individual store's needs. To create a more efficient system, first, Fractal Analytics brought in data sets from the stores and the store's partners. Then they ran some exploratory data analysis and tested hypotheses. Next, they performed store segmentation. Um, so they grouped together stores based on common traits, for instance, region or size. Their solution involved performing deep learning models and they built an algorithm that helped the store schedule its staff so it would have sales personnel where they needed them most. Um, they reduced the number of sales personnel in locations that didn't have as many customers coming in and more heavily concentrated those salespeople in more highly trafficked areas. They redid how the stores did stocking um, and used store segmentation to figure out which products um, a certain location would be need more of and then also figured out how to route these supply chains most efficiently for each store. The results were pretty striking. Uh, the stores increased their visits by 20%. Due to the staffing changes that they made, they improved the store coverage by 30%, which again, uh, really helped with customer retention. And this also reduced the costs that it took for them to serve by 12%. Overall, they increased their net sales revenue by 4%. The next case study is senseforth.ai, um, with natural language processing. Umang, the unified mobile application for new age governance, was a project that consolidated a bunch of government resources, more than 1,200 services into one application. This was well received by the tech literate population, 
but the people who were less familiar with technology or had less ac access to it, um, it didn't reach them as well, and they were falling through the cracks. So India's government hired SenseForth.ai, which is part of Fractal Analytics, to make their app more accessible. What they did was use this conversational AI to, um, they, they integrated it into the app. And so users would be able to speak or type their questions in just like the, the way that everyone talks day to day. And this technology would be able to understand that and point them really quickly to the resources that they needed. This was piloted in 2022 with Hindi and English and are looking to expand to 10 more languages and dialects soon. Daily, this platform handles millions of conversations with a 96% accuracy rate. And to get a little bit more into how this technology does it is it uses neural networks in order to understand the complexities of um, what certain phrases and certain words mean and do this across many languages, reaching more of India's population. Fractal Analytics has a variety of products and services that uses its expertise in AI and innovation to create solutions for problems their, uh, their clients face across the business world. Their goal is to use AI to power every human decision and their product provides user-friendly interfaces to help their clients make informed time-sensitive time decisions. A lot of their clients already have the data that Fractal Analytics will use to help them, but they don't have an efficient or effective system in place to use the data optimally. Several case studies described the highly time and labor intensive ways that businesses manage their data, uh, sometimes taking weeks to process it, uh, making it too late to make a informed, timely decision. Fractal Analytics then sp steps in for their clients and helps the companies um, innovate their processes to um, better use the information that they have. Um, they have several products that perform different services. Senseforth.ai is a conversational AI um, that we just talked about. Asper.ai assists businesses in growing their revenue. Cure.ai uses algorithms for medical imaging. Crux Intelligence is an AI-powered analytics platform. And Eugenie.ai analyzes business operations to find ways to be more sustainable and reduce carbon emissions. Fractal Analytics uh, partners with a variety of cloud providers, cloud platforms, data partners, and tech platforms uh, again, to better reach their customers. A couple of the most well-known are Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, Snowflake, Databricks, and Oracle. In their consulting practice, Fractal Analytics custom clients pay for um, Fractal Analytics personnel to quickly but holistically analyze their situation and innovate better ways for the business to operate. They also pay for the products that we just went over um, to suit their needs. The price for these services is of course not publicized, but considering that it's one of the best in the world, primarily serves Fortune 500 clients, and that their services might increase a company's revenue by a couple hundred million dollars each year, it's not cheap, um, but it is a very worthwhile investment for their clients. I had a hard time finding much information on their marketing. Their website hosts a wealth of information and persuasive case studies, uh, which definitely helps spread it. And one secondary source, oh, oops. Um, one secondary source uh, claimed that the company's marketing budget was relatively low for a company of this size, um, but focused on a select few media channels. Back to the customer segments. Most of the customers are, like I said, Fortune 500 companies, and they also um, have several uh, well-known case studies where they worked with governments. Uh, for instance, with the COVID pandemic, they tracked and predicted where 
different um, outbreaks would be in, a, in an attempt to curb the spread of the pandemic. Their industries range from include consumer packaged goods, retail, healthcare and life sciences, financial services, technology, media, and telecom, and insurance. One of Fractal Analytics historical competitors was Mu Sigma. This company was founded four years after Fractal Analytics, but they raised funding more quickly and has have a broader global reach. Fractal Analytics argues that it's better though since it pays a notably higher salary to their employees and win a higher percentage of the bids when they compete directly with this competitor. As I've talked about throughout this presentation, they use a wealth of data to help make decisions for their clients. And um, this ranges from everything from consumer demographics, financial data, COVID cases, um, and they use AI machine learning, neural networks, and big data uh, in order to power all of these decisions. I think one of the most compelling things about this specific company is that they root their analyses in human-centered design and really work to figure out a solution for the customer to make um, their processes more efficient and make them able, they teach the client's personnel about how to use the data and how to use their, their technology effectively and make it easy to do so. As far as the prospects for this business, their services are in high demand. They are clearly very competent at what they do across their field, and the company is adaptable. Several times throughout their history, they have majorly restructured or refocused what they as a company do, and those changes have always led to growth. For instance, in 2016, when they restructured to each focus on each of the company's products as an individual product that enabled a depth of knowledge in those specific areas that is really crucial to the company um, providing high quality services to their clients. And um, in addition to the technological portion, which they're really on top of, um, they also have an incredible workplace culture. They've been ranked in the top 100 best workplaces overall for many years and in the top 100 best workplaces for women uh, for the last three consecutive years. They have very clear um, goals for recruiting more women and having more women in leadership positions. Uh, it's currently very male dominated, but they have like, they have a clear goalposts over the next couple of years. And again, um, another one of the most compelling pieces of this company is their focus in human-centered design and using um, all of this complex information and technology and data in order to really tangibly make people's lives better in ways that we can't really see without using that data, but using it um, to holistically look at a situation and make it work as best as they can for the clients. And here are some of my resources.